Howdy folks, welcome back. Today we are on the range once again, playing around with the Model 83 from Freedom Arms. Originally chambered in 454 Casol, but today we have the 45 Colt cylinder installed. And we've got our chronograph back finally after some repairs. Some repairs. By that I mean total replacement because I shot a freaking hole through it. Anyways, we're gonna check some velocities on some of these projectiles. We're gonna shoot some paper, see if we can't shoot a group with them, and just plink around on the steel. But first up, we have the 212 grain pentapoint sent in by a viewer of the channel. If you remember, we shot some of these at the top of the hill a little while back. I'll save five of those for today when we get to the end and we'll go up and see if we can't hit some of the steel from afar. But for now, we're just plinking around having a bit of fun. So like I said, we're just gonna be plinking a little bit. So let's hit some steel a few times. Then we'll try for a group. I need to actually hang up and move target. But let's hit some steel and get at it. One, two, three, four, five, just like that, folks. It's funny, I kind of hold a tighter group shooting fast on the steel than I do actually trying to group on the paper. But we'll, uh, we'll try and shoot a group here in a bit. Anyways, I'm just playing around today. And yeah, these cases are still dirty as heck, even in the 45 Colt cylinder with our uh, pretty minimal charge of the 700X. But we should be getting some extra brass life. You know, it's not working them too hard. They might not even be fully obturating to the cylinder. I guess if they were, then we'd have noticed because there wouldn't be so much powder having blown by on the cases. So as you see, we got a couple new targets set up here. The little popper and the hexagon. Those were sent in by MGM targets. Thanks again to Miss Shawnee for that. Really hooking up the channel. There it is. Missed one of the holes. Anyways, uh, thanks again to MGM Targets. They sent a sweet hat as well, but we're just going to be hitting that guy on the right here to break him in the proper way. Ooh, doggy. Pretty light loads, but they still make the steel ring. Very nice. Okay, so we got our target hung up now. We're just gonna try and hit that top circle there. See if we can't get a little grouping. Show off our mad offhand skills. Because anybody can hit an eight inch plate, but can you hold it steady? Well, there's uh, four of them pretty close like normal, and then we pulled that fifth guy up a little bit. All right, we got the chronograph set up. We'll do one or two over that just to kind of get a, a rough estimate of where we're at. Then we'll go back to plinking. 884. Nine hundred and seventeen. So split the difference and you're right at nine hundred feet per second. That's right where we were with the semi wad cutter from the other episode, if you remember that. Well, let's see if we can't keep this little popper down. Ah, oh, nuts. Ah, oh, nuts. We were almost, almost good, except not so much, guys. Just not so much on that one, but that, uh, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. All right, I've got five more. We're going to keep them all on Mr. Popper, and then we'll save five for the top of the hill again. I almost feel bad shooting these because they're so dang purty. But, uh, well, I need my brass back so that we can load some other stuff up. All 
All right, little popper buddy. Got him rocking that time. That's how you keep them down there, folks. Ugh. Okay, I've got five left. We'll save that for the end when we get to the top of the hill. But we're gonna switch it up. And next is gonna be the 252 grain semi wad cutter. And there you go, up next, the 252 grain semi wad cutter from Lee. These should make some nice holes in the paper whenever we get to that portion of the program. But for now, we're just gonna hit that steel a little bit harder than the 212 grain did. Well, it turns out I've had a reloading blunder. This ammo does not fit in this cylinder. Looks like we have uh, maybe a slight bulge where I crimped the snot out of it, you dummy. Three, four, five. Okay, well, scratch that. Maybe these only fit into the uh, 454 Casul cylinder. Damn, that's disappointing. Well, we're going to set these aside, head up the hill, for, and we'll see if we can hit some steel from the top of the hill. Stand by. Here's a quick look at the target before we run up that hill there. We got four of them about the size of that two-inch dot. And then, like usual, we throw one outside, but no biggie. They'll shoot as good as I can shoot them, which isn't very good. But anyways, let's hop up the hill there and take those last five from way downtown. Okay, well, unfortunately... Those semi wad cutters weren't going to chamber into this cylinder. So we're up here on the top of the hill with our Penta Point 112 grain hollow points here. And we're just gonna see if we can't knock the steel with the rest of our ammo. Well, that was almost a disappointing ending. We missed those first three and really puckered up there and almost embarrassed myself here on the camera. What's well, new? Anyways, unfortunately, we'll have to come back to those semi wad cutters. But as you see, those hollow points performed excellently when I know how to hold them. But there you have it, folks the Freedom Arms Model 83 with some 45 Colt cast encoded hollow point projectiles. So that's going to wrap it up for now. Thanks again for joining and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.